I am so proud. When I just said about not forgetting where you came from, I got a friend of mine that's a union electrician that started from the bottom, went through an apprenticeship, worked his way up, ran this labor organization for years, is a true leader in southern New Jersey, and served with me in the Senate for a few years. Uh, you had the shortest term in the assembly, didn't you? Four days, three days. He liked it that much. Pat, good luck. And, but he has never forgotten where he's come from and what he stands for. He stands for us. When we elected Donald, we elected ourselves to Congress. The sad thing is there's only three union leaders, union people, in the 435 membership in the House. And i got to tell you, we need to have more. But having people like Donald that can get into get into the discussions and the arguments, to let people understand what minimum wage is about and health care is about, it's a big difference. And you know, when you're in a room with people debating those things, sometimes you actually get a chance to punch through. So it is my honor, my great honor, to, to uh, call upon somebody that I'm very proud of, Donald Norcross, my congressman. There is no better way to get introduced than somebody you grew up with, somebody that you spent time with on the job site, as we did Garden State Park, and as a business agent at the Building Trades back when Dorenzo ran it, and then serving in the Senate and sitting in caucus across from Steve, where Steve was mentioning having your voice at the table, and you would hear comments. Now, this is a Democratic caucus. Just odd comments, that, and we would just look at each other and know immediately uh, they don't understand the issue. So to my friend Steve, who I now call Senate President, that I hope to, and I think uh, we're going to someday be calling him the Governor of the State of New Jersey. back in 1996 was the first time we came up with the award and we did it in a very specific reason because we understood here in labor that we represent more than just bargaining rights and the things that we do as business agents day in and day out and that's what we do outside of our normal job and to have Joe Pillow who uh, is Joe Dorenzo's vision of what a business agent should be obviously working very hard for your members, but outside of that, it's a 24-7 job. And Joe, to you and your family, congratulations, it's well-deserved. Um, I see my friends up here uh, from Gloucester and Camden County, Luke Capelli, and uh, that other electrician, uh, doing project labor agreements, having relationships, now listen, management and labor always fight, have discussions, but there is a certain bond here in the, the lower part of the state that started back, quite frankly, with Joe Dorenzo. Joe Dorenzo was president of Camden City Council, and we were noticing things got done pretty well there. And that just evolved. Frank Spencer then ran for Camden County. Uh, Freeholder was successful. By the way, Frank was elected last week to the number two guy in the Carpenters International. So, but Frank is doing pretty well. And then this guy Billy Bain came along and he's out of firefighters and he's in Deptford. And then this guy Steve Sweeney came along. And it's remarkable because it's what you do outside of those jobs. And Sue Michelli, who has been running the Labor Council for what? four or five years now, uh, understands that, that it's just not about the picket lines. It's what we do day in and day out. And when I look at this, uh, we've been doing this for 121 years, not me. <laughs> Us collectively have been doing it for 121 years. You didn't have to laugh that much, Neil. So. It's, it's still the right color, right? <laughs> if my grandson was here, I'd swear on him. You just cut it shorter and the gray goes away. I'm going to be bald by next year. Uh, but we look back and, and 
Rich Tolson handed me a picture of my father and Joe Lorenzo probably back in the mid 80s when Joe was being recognized for his great works. And it just reminded me, and what Steve said is, remember how we got here. Um, I feel like I'm home, because I know I'm home. And when we look back, you know, back when we started, there was only one law firm, Tomar Park, Soliger, Simon Austin, and Dory, and O'Brien. And Bob is still here today. Howard, where are you? Howard is still here today. They were our labor. They kept us out of jail. Thank you. You did a good job. But it's remembering that history. And I saw Rose Glassberg, who wasted no time in sharing her views of the Iranian deal with me, which is what we should be doing. But it was her vision. Now, over 600 scholarships later, half a million dollars of changing lives, of giving that opportunity for those who wanted to pursue a college career. And I'm up here to tell you that not everybody is made to or should go to college. That working with your hands is one of the noblest causes. And I'm proud to stand up here and say, I'm an electrician. We need to remember that because it's not always college. It's another four-year school. It's called apprenticeship. And men and women here should be proud of working with their hands. Those who go to college should be also proud. It's what that leads you in life. And I was just making some notes here before I came up, and I had the two-minute warning. I'm going to take more time. I had this big policy speech, let's talk about trade on how we got screwed and the Cadillac tax. I don't want to talk about that today. I want to talk about what you have done in this room that led the way for Steve to be Senate President, for me to be the first business agent in Congress. I mean, think about that. Because it's not about me. Every one of you, and I'm looking around the room, this is literally like a homecoming, have been part of that. So whether you're a freeholder in Camden County who does PLAs, in Gloucester County who does PLAs, and I look around the room, we have councilmen, firefighters, everybody across the board who've been able to bring that together because you need to have a voice in the room. We have an iron worker, Steve Lynch out of Mass, myself as an electrician out of New Jersey, and Mark Pocan, a painter out of Wisconsin. That's it. That's the voice of working men and women in Congress. Something's really out of whack. And we can see that today just by the country, Trump being on top of the board. Now, I got nothing against Donald Trump, but let's talk about the real issues. And, you know, listen, I can scream and yell and blame immigrants for everything. That's not getting us together. New Jersey, we've had some tremendous fights. I was sworn in the same time that Governor uh, Christie was. We're not on the same page. But you know what? Sometimes we had to be on the same page to move forward. That at the end of the day, you can sit down and have these conversations. We're not going to get to the promised land on all issues. But that's what's so important today. And that's, quite frankly, what's not happening down in D.C. And that's why I find so disappointing. So I made a vow that when I went down there, I'm not contributing to that BS. As much as sometimes you want to jump in and scream and holler, I'm about trying to bring solutions, to bring your voice to the table. So I just want to bring you one story and wrap this up. My first vote, I got elected on the 8th of November. I was sworn in with my grandson by my side on the 12th of November. I literally, right after that, it was the vote on the pipeline issue. Well, to me, this came down to when I had studied the issue long before I got there, it was about creating jobs in America. It doesn't take us all a long time to remember back to when we had the odd even days on fuel. Yeah, that was not a lot of fun carrying around two license plates. I didn't do that. I didn't, but I understand that some people might have done it, right, Steve? But it came down to jobs. The best social program, how many times have I said it, is a job. So here I am, and we're in the Democratic caucus, and I'm the new guy. I understand, listen, stand back and listen. But to hear them start talking about, ah, they're only temporary jobs, they're only part-time. They're talking about the building trades. They're talking about my life. So I had an opportunity not to get up there and be raped, but say, this is about jobs. 
And the business agents from the trades in this room know the story because they probably had to do it. I never, ever in my life want to go again to a funeral of a member who decided unemployment's best way out was to check out himself. That's as real as it gets, folks. To look into the eyes of a wife and the kids who lost hope because he was unemployed. That's why labor is at the table, to bring those stories. And if we remember that, that's not about us, it's about who we represent, and this country will be much better off. I, um, I just want to close with a, uh, a quick uh, story. For years, back when I ran UOSS and the AFL-CIO, we had a very dear friend of ours, John Slauson. He's sat over here for so many years. And this is the issue that we don't want to talk about in mental illness. But John lost his fight with depression, who was a dear friend of mine. And when we talk about whether it's drug addiction, alcoholism, or any of those, we need to have a public discussion. There's not a family who hasn't been touched, who hasn't been impacted by that deadly addiction. And it is as important for us to represent our members in wages and working to condition as it is making sure that their mental health issues are addressed. So when you go back to your families today, we're going to go to the cemetery right after us. Let's remember why we came here today. And that's to celebrate the working men and women of this great country. And the fact of the matter that is that each and every one of you have played a great part in that. And I thank you very much. God bless. before we get on with our program. On Labor Day, Monday, September 7th, the battleship will be offering free complimentary tours to union members with valid ID. Again, it's an opportunity to tour the battleship. Just take your union ID with you and they will give you a free tour of the battleship. Okay, now I'm going to call for a moment of silence for those we have lost this past year, including former business manager of UA Local 322, Kirk Kruger Sr., and member of UOSS and Labor Council family, John Slauson. 